guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a little story time series, um, basically where I just tell a story or some kind of, you know, something good maybe that happened or just like a good story I wanna share with you guys. So today I have my husband with me and we're gonna talk about something that happened to him the beginning of this year. Last year, let me move my train off. Yeah, so January 17th, he got up and what happened? Tell your story. Had a heart attack. A few moments later, um, I went to the gym four in the morning. And I got on the elliptical, I started running a little bit, and then I felt a little funky, so I was like, okay, maybe I'm just tired. I'm gonna try it again. So I walked, then I tried running again, and then I started feeling weird again. So I said, okay, it's just, I'm just really tired. So I went on the bike, and it started happening again. So I said, okay, you know what? It's just, it's Friday, it's one in the morning, it's the end of the week, I'm just tired. Um, I did all, Monday to Thursday, working out as well. So then I said, I'm just gonna take a shower. Went in there, took a shower, went to work. Was fine the entire day. And right about 2.30, um, I started feeling almost like a digestion or a heartburn feeling, but it was pretty painful. Anyway, so my coworkers and I, we kind of just Googled it and they all say, well, it's kind of running into it, maybe heartburn or something along those lines. Um, then they asked me if my arm hurt, if my jaw was sore, if I was sweating. At that time, I didn't have those symptoms. So I was just like, no, not yet. It was just my chest hurting really bad. So one of my coworkers, she gave me um, some crackers um, to try to help me. Um, I, for, it did for like a couple minutes, it did. And then I um, went to the car, because I got off at uh, three o'clock. And um, I went into the car and it started hurting again, so. But this time it came really bad then. By then my hand was hurting, my left hand was hurting, then my jaw was hurting. Um, and then I was driving, so I called my mom, I told her what was going on. Um, she said that, you know, just maybe go home and take some off. Uh, Tums, it might help. Um, but she probably knew what was going on. She just didn't want me to freak out because the drive home, I was pretty much hurting the whole time. The chest, it was hurt. The arm, it was just a metal and sitting on it. So I drove to the house and when I got inside, I just dropped on the floor and my wife's like, what's going on? So I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'm having heartburn. And she just looked at me like, okay, you're having heartburn and you just fell on the floor. So that's nothing. So I'm like, okay, maybe I just go rest. Took some thumbs, laid on the bed. Wasn't helping. Then it kind of stopped a little bit. So that day we were supposed to go to my parents to eat. So we got in the car, we got the kids in the car. And then I drove to my parents. And then when I got there, I just, you know, I couldn't take it. It was, it was just hurting, it was painful. Um, and so then my mom checked my blood pressure. And the moment I get in there, you know, the moment I came inside the house, she knew what was going on. She already probably knew I was having a heart attack. She just didn't want to tell me in front of my kids and everybody. So I went into the bedroom and I just, I couldn't hear anything. I was just hurting and she's just like, okay, yeah, you need to go to the emergency room. So I got back in the car and my dad took me to the Rocky Mount emergency room, got in there. Um, and um, they, I said, I'm having a chest pain. They got me all red all out. They got me took my shirt, got me plugged in. Um, and they told me, you know, after a few minutes, they finally said, yep, you're having a heart attack. After that, I'm just, you know, full panic mode, just freaking out, shaking, everything going crazy, running circles. Um, so they got me hooked up, told me I was having an attack. They told me I had to be flown to Roto because I wouldn't be able to make it in an ambulance. So they got me ready to put in a helicopter. Um, then I went to the Roanoke Hospital, then I got off of the helicopter, then 
20 more doctors came in, nurses, they got me all settled up to get um, the surgery to put the stents in the heart. So they got me in there. I guess while I was in there, they just told me that they were trying to put a catheter through my wrist to get, you know, that tube or whatever going to my heart. They said, you know, most like 95% or higher, we can do it through there. If not, we'll have to put one near your groin. And I said, you're not going near my groin with no shots. I don't care what you're doing. I told that doctor, you're gonna have to punch me if you're gonna put a needle near my groin because it's just not happening. <laughs> so long story short, they finally calmed me down after a few minutes fighting. Then they put the two stents on there. Um, and the doctors, he says, you know, he says, I don't know how you're still alive. I don't know how you went to work. I don't know how you drove to your house and to your house, to your parents, and from your parents to the hospital. He says that uh, both two carriers are, were 99.9% um, .9 blocked. And he said that, you know, usually people just don't drive with that kind of pain or that severe of a heart attack and then still make it to the hospital and survive to tell about it. <clears throat> so he says that, you know, it's, it's a miracle that you're even here, that you even made it this far, so. Um, after that, he said everything should be fine now. You're just gonna have to stay in the hospital for a day or so. So I stayed there for uh, two days, three days. And um, the doctor say you're gonna have to make some dramatic changes. He put me in a uh, vegan diet. You know, it's I'm a meat eater. Um, God put him in this earth for a reason. So I, I went <laughs> vegan for six months. I've lost over 35 pounds. I gained energy that I've never had before. It was just like a boost jump. Um, that my heart was beating better than it was before. Uh, so the doctor was like, I'm impressed of how good you're doing. I put you on a Mediterranean diet. And so I've been on a Mediterranean diet since then. Um, I've been working out. I've been feeling great. I've had more energy. I've just been doing all around better. Um, and then I guess <laughs> the other part my wife wanted to share is that um, I guess through all of that, we don't know how long we have. I'm 32. This usually happens on somebody that's 50s, 60s, 80s. Uh, the doctor said that I was his second patient that was the youngest. The other one was 29 and then I was the second one that was 32. He said, I've never had somebody, and I was the first one who came in there with a percentage 99.9 .9 block and survived to tell about it. So, you know, it's brought a whole new perspective on life um, to do the things you really want, to push yourself to do it, not just get up and do something that you have, you know, that's required without liking it, or just get up and do your nine to five job and do it because it's that's it that's all you have to do you know you for me i just you know the things i want to do and i'm doing it now because tomorrow i might not have tomorrow we don't know if we have tomorrow and we just got to push it and then that heart attack is brought up in a perspective of not just life but spending time with the kids spending time with family and so we've been spending so much time doing a few other things and then um you know just waiting for somebody to give us a million dollars so we can do a few other things. Um, but no, it, it was an experience. It happened, you know, there's no reason why. I can't tell you why I was the one who survived. I've known a couple people that friends had heart attacks and died. I, I have no idea why, you know, God's, you know, plans are different. Uh, we have no idea why we did it, you know, why it happened to me and why we have to tell about it. But hopefully, you know, it, you know, I do what I do now. I stay healthy. I eat better. Not just because it's good for me, but it's to also, you know, I almost, I almost put like a perspective point on the other ones they didn't make it. You know, I'm doing that for them. You know, it's almost like if I don't do it, you know, I wasted my life. And then if I just eat whatever I want and just be soapy and just, you know, be depressed, you know, I... 
my life that was saved, it just, it would be meant for nothing. So I want it to be meant for something and show people that, you know, if you don't believe in God, there is one. Um, you know, you just have to encounter it. Uh, you have to believe it. You just can't say, well, no, this happened and that happened, you know, crap happens in life. Um, you just gotta push it. You have to believe in it. Um, and the most important part is, you know, not be afraid of, just also be dependent on your family. Cause you know, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for my wife, for my kids, for my family, for our church. They stepped in at the moment I had a heart attack, the pastors stopped what they're doing, went to the hospital and went there within half an hour. There was an army waiting for me after the heart attack. Um, you know, there was the Pastor Phil and Sister Gina, they were, they, they were just, you know, amazing. The church, the church itself um, was amazing. They just, not even just support, you know, sent us letters, sent us gifts, sent us money. Um, our friends, you know, they did so much as well. Our families, they, the ch meals, it was just a pour of, you know, all the things that, you know, I'm thinking, how are we going to do this? How are we going to pay that? And, you know, we didn't have to think about that after that happened. Everything just kind of fell through. They supported us. They helped us. So it was, it was a interesting story or experience. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, wish that on anybody, um, especially on people that are my age, because, you know, you have so much to live for. Like I said, I'm 32. I still want to do things I want to do. I'm doing things right now that I should have done a long time ago and pushing myself to do it. And, you know, I just, you know, first of all, give glory to God for saving my life and then just living it for everybody that didn't make it and making my life, you know, what would be the word? Matter, you know, not to let it go in waste because I don't want it to be a waste. I have things to live for and I have a family. But no, yeah, that's our one of our miracle stories. And um, like I said, you know, all glory goes to God. He, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't uh, be here. That 99.9 was, you know, the enemy holding it. And God only needs that 1%. He doesn't need 50% to hold it. He just needs that 1%. And, you know, his power is greater than anything. And he can do so much more with that person. He did more with that one person that, you know, he could have done anything, but, you know, it was one person, could have been gone any second. I should have been gone any second. Should have been gone the moment I woke up in the morning and started having those feelings. But, <clears throat> you know, here I am, a few months later. I actually was pregnant at the time. I was, I don't, yeah. I don't remember how many weeks pregnant I was, but I was pretty close to my due date because I was doing April and I was in January. So you add that up. Um, I was probably six or seven months pregnant. So yeah, that was really hard on me having to struggle between taking care of my kids and wanting to be at the hospital. Um, I was at the hospital a lot of the time, but I also had to come home, you know, because I had to take care of my kids and I had to be there for my kids. And actually one of the saddest moments um, of that time was when my mother came <clears throat> to bring the kids to see their dad and my youngest at the time, this was before I had my baby, um, <clears throat> did not want to leave and he just cried and cried and cried when he had to leave and he was trying to tell his dad, come, come, you gotta come too. But he didn't understand that his dad had to stay there and he was just so heartbroken and so sad. So yeah, it was rough on all of us, but thankfully he's still alive. He actually almost died a second time. Different story. <laughs> different story for another day. Um, if you want to hear that story, I'll post it on a different day, but yeah. Okay. If you do want to hear the story, <laughs> Comment. Yeah, comment. Let me know if you want to hear that story where he almost died a second time. We're boring people. We <laughs> have a very interesting <laughs> life. But no, I just thank God and thanks to my wife for having my YouTube channel. Make sure you guys subscribe, <laughs> like. She needs all the subscribes. The more subscribes she gets, that'd be awesome. Maybe, maybe if we get enough subscribers. 
she gets subscribers, maybe she'll do like a raffle and give us a little gift certificate. But no, yeah, give it, just subscribe, hit the like notification, and just keep watching her videos. They're awesome. The channel. channel. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys, for tuning into my story time. I hope you enjoyed my husband's story. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, stay tuned for my next video. We hope you enjoyed this video and have a wonderful, amazing, fantabulous day. And remember that miracles still happen and Jesus loves you and he will take care of you if you just put your trust in him.